I am uh, joined by uh, today's speaker pro tem, uh, Debbie Dingle from Michigan, uh, Philemon Vila uh, from the state of Texas, and Don Byer from the state of Virginia. 2020 has been a challenging year for America, a challenging year for our people, a sad, sad year as we lost over 330,000 of our fellow citizens to a pandemic caused by COVID-19. Since March, we have been attempting to respond appropriately uh, and timely to the challenge, not only to the health of the American people, uh, but also uh, to the health of our economy and the extraordinary economic pain inflicted by COVID-19 in addition to the health uh, challenge that it posed. We have passed uh, a number of pieces of legislation. The first piece of legislation that we passed was on March 14th. That legislation passed 363 to 40. Shortly thereafter, some uh, less than two weeks thereafter, we passed uh, the CARES Act, uh, passed in the House uh, on voice vote. That was March 27th. On April 23rd, we passed the Paycheck Protection Program and Health Care Enhancement Act 385 to 5, 388 to 5. On May 15th, uh, we passed, because of the continuing challenge to health uh, and uh, safety and to the economy and jobs and welfare of the American people, we passed the HEROES Act. Unfortunately, by that time, the Republicans had decided that they'd done enough, that they should wait to see what would happen. Uh, when we passed the HEROES Act, and we passed it through the House of Representatives on a partisan basis, 214 to 207, the majority leader of the United States Senate, Republican Mitch McConnell, said, uh, let the states go bankrupt. And the leader of the Republican Party in the House of Representatives, let's wait and see. And of course, what we saw from March uh, on was continuing death of our people, continuing challenge to our hospitals and our workers, and continuing devastation uh, to our families from an economic perspective. We urged uh, the Republicans uh, to come to the table with us. Uh, Speaker Pelosi talked to Mr. Mnuchin, Secretary Mnuchin, numerous times, but we could get no movement as the country continued uh, to lose citizens as a result of COVID-19 and continued, continued to have uh, economic challenge. So when we came back in September, uh, we passed another bill, reducing the resources we have dedicated to fighting uh, the pandemic and uplifting the economy by 35% as an effort to reach compromise. That was uh, unsuccessful. Now, at uh, an hour far too late, but never let too late to do the right thing, we passed a very substantial piece of legislation just a few days ago in the House of Representatives. It passed the House of Representatives 359 to 53 in a bipartisan basis after very tough negotiations, prolonged negotiations in which we urge substantially more investment in America's health and America's economy. But uh, that was opposed. Uh, and the deal that we made was a deal that we thought was appropriate uh, in the sense that it had the votes to pass. And according to Republican leaders that I have talked to, had the representation from both Secretary Mnuchin and the President of the United States that he would sign the bill. He has still said he won't sign the bill, and I urge him and hope that he will sign the bill. Uh, Republicans had rejected proposals for higher stimulus checks uh, in uh, the bill that we passed and previous bills. Last week, as I said, we reached a bipartisan agreement. 
Uh, we sent the bill to the president to President Trump to sign, and only then, after we agreed on a figure we thought was too low for direct payments to families and children, six hundred dollars, but the Republicans would not take a higher figure. Only then did the President of the United States indicate that six hundred was not enough. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, Mr. Mnuchin had uh, indicated that that uh, the lower figure might have been appropriate. Believe it or not, Democrats agree with the president, at least to the extent that we need to sign this bill now. 600 is uh, certainly uh, not enough for individuals who have been struggling these past seven months, and it isn't enough to provide the boost our economy needs. President Trump, as I said on the floor, on behalf of the speaker, and myself, I ask for unanimous consent to pass a bill which would have responded to the president's request. But because we did not have the agreement of the minority leader, again, I offered there are three people who can stop a unanimous consent by any one of them disagreeing. And I offered it on behalf of the Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, and myself. Uh, but it was uh, not agreed to. The morning, this morning, I asked, as I said, unanimous consent. Under the rules, all three of us had to agree. Two of us did. The minority leader did not. House Republicans rejected the unanimous consent request, blocking that increase so sought by Democrats and now also by President Trump. The American people need to know with certainty that Democrats are trying to get them higher stimulus payments. This is Christmas Eve. Surely, the President of the United States, whether he's in Mar-a-Lago or any place else, ought to empathize with the pain and suffering and apprehension and deep angst that the American people are feeling this Christmas Eve and sign this bill. As we saw today, the Republicans in Congress and the White House can't agree on what they want. Again, this, this bill passed overwhelmingly through the House of Representatives and the United States Senate. The entire COVID-19 relief package, so desperately needed by our people and our businesses, remains on the President's desk, and he can sign it today. I urge the President to sign the bill we sent him so we can resume critical aid to small businesses, provide peace of mind to renters, uh, resume expanded unemployment benefits, uh, give food to those who are hungry, to assist our health care workers, to make sure the vaccine is not just in vials but in arms. In sum, to make sure that the relief that American people need and that the economy needs is adopted. He needs to sign this bill to ensure that the government remains open and serving the American people as well. How ironic it would be to shut down the government at a time of pandemic crisis, the very time when government services are needed the most. No partisan politics. Put the people first. This bill is for the people, for the country. Sign this bill, Mr. President. Now I yield to uh, the gentlelady from Michigan, uh, who was the president pro tem, presiding today, and who's been such a fighter on behalf of all the bills I talked about in getting assistance to the American people, not only in Michigan, but throughout this country. 